We see a very different picture when we look at the Seventh-day Adventists, the preeminent proponents of the Seventh-day Sabbath today. Membership totals more than 13 million in some 200 countries and is growing rapidly. Although their theology is firmly rooted in the Protestant tradition, Seventh-day Adventists have been a special target of criticism because of their uncompromising commitment to the Bible Sabbath, a commitment that some opponents see as a denial of the Christian's freedom in Christ. Freedom, of course, is at the heart of the Christian faith. There are some who charge that keeping the Seventh-day Sabbath is a rejection of Christian freedom. They say that Sabbath-keeping is legalism, an attempt to earn salvation by obedience. But is true Sabbath-keeping really legalism? God instituted the Sabbath at creation before sin. Was it legalism then? If it wasn't legalism then, what inherently makes it legalistic now? When God gave them the manna for 40 years in the wilderness, the manna didn't fall on the Sabbath. Was that legalism? When God gave them the Ten Commandments, were all ten of the commandments legalistic? Was God binding them to a legalistic code? No, he wasn't. Obedience is not legalism. Obedience can be an expression of our response in love and gratitude to God for his grace and salvation. Now, most Christian theologians agree that salvation is based on God's promises, his covenant, rather than on a person's behavior. Therefore, they insist that keeping Sabbath in obedience to the commandment is not necessary. Seventh-day Adventists agree that salvation comes only on the basis of God's promises, but they see the Sabbath as an important part of man's relationship with God. Throughout Scripture, the covenant is presented as an experience of resting in God. God wants people to rely upon Him, and He gives them the provisions that He's given them in the covenant so they can have this rest and security in God. When we're outside of that covenant relationship with God, we're concerned about our salvation, we're concerned about the future, what that might bring, but within that covenantal experience, you have complete rest and confidence in God. The Sabbath symbolized that rest. In keeping Sabbath, we rest in this assurance that Jesus on the cross has redeemed us and, and we are saved and we are his children and we can rely on him. Well, if the Sabbath does have a proper place in the Christian's life, why does it have to be on Saturdays? Most churches teach that Christians should keep Sunday instead. And they cite New Testament references to support their view. But does the New Testament really teach that Sunday, the first day of the week, is the Christian Sabbath? Uh, the first day uh, is mentioned in the New Testament. Uh, Christians even seem to have met a time or two on the first day. Uh, but there's no transfer of the importance of the Seventh-day Sabbath to the first day, what we now call Sunday. Uh, it does not become the day of rest. It does not become the day when God's creative activity is celebrated. Uh, it simply does not become the day of Christian worship, which remains the seventh day Sabbath. But here is another consideration that is often overlooked the place of the Sabbath in Bible prophecy, particularly the prophetic book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse. The prophetic drama unfolds, symbolically portraying the war between Jesus Christ and Satan, his great enemy. It's a conflict of the ages, sweeping across the stage of human events. It culminates in a thrilling climax heralded by the appearance of angelic messengers. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, 
and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. In the context of the closing scenes and phases of this drama, with the hour of the judgment having come, earth dwellers are to worship God. And then God is described. Using the language of the fourth commandment, God is described as the one who created all things. And because the passage uh, echoes the fourth commandment, I don't believe it's, it's stretching it too far for us to understand that at this final point in the drama, dwellers on earth are issued a heavenly summons to come back to worshiping God as the creator on his Sabbath day, on the seventh day Sabbath. So the Sabbath is part of God's divine plan to heal the broken relationship with his human children. Even in a world where life's true purpose and meaning have been almost forgotten, where faith languishes in the rubble of infidelity, even in such a world as this, the Sabbath continues to signal God's call to the human soul. The lost pages of history have revealed the amazing story of this almost forgotten day, the seventh day Sabbath, the biblical day of holy rest and sacred worship. We've traced it from its origin in the biblical account of creation, where God established it to memorialize his creative work and define the weekly cycle. We've tracked it through the time of Jesus, whose ministry infused it with new meaning. And we've seen how it lived on despite the attempts to regulate it, bury it, or ban it. We've uncovered ancient evidence of the Sabbath in places as diverse as Ireland and Ethiopia, where it survived through ages of opposition and attack. We've seen it revived in the teachings of the early Anabaptists and the English Seventh-day Men. We've seen it preserved in the face of persecution and martyrdom. We've seen it restored to worldwide attention as thousands upon thousands of Christians discover for themselves the place of the Seventh-day Sabbath in a Bible-based religious experience. And the Bible completes its picture of the Sabbath by giving us a preview of the life to come, the future life in a perfect universe. Listen to this. As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. So the Sabbath, the memorial of God's creative and redemptive work, is a part of his design for the future of the human race. From the earth as it came from the Creator's hand to the perfectly restored new earth, the Sabbath stands as a sanctuary in time, transcending history and projecting its promise of rest into the eternal future.